We're so excited today. You were, I know you were excited also. Let's stand up together. Come on, let's worship our God today. Yes. Yes. I know this is a new day after the storm. Yes. God has given us a good weather today. Yes. Amen. Let's welcome our uh, visitors. We welcome you here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us and choosing this place to worship God together. I just want to, you to be encouraged with this uh, God's scripture. It can be found in Psalms 84 verse 10 to 11. It says in verse 10, For a day in the courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the house in the tents of wickedness the psalmist said uh, it's better a one day in, in the house of god is better than many thousand elsewhere and then in verse 11 he said the reason why you know the reasons why he said there for the lord god is a sun and shield and the lord will give grace and glory no good thing will he withhold from them that walk upright verse 11 is full of promises of god there are five of them. First, the Lord God will be your son. He will be the light of your life. When your life is in darkness, He will be your light. And He, he will give you shield, protect you from anything, from sickness, from harm. Jesus will be your shield. And then the Lord will give you grace and glory. And the last one is, He will not uphold good things on you. He will give all the good things in your life to them that walk uprightly. Isn't our God amazing? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we come today for you, O God. We offer our praises, our sacrifices today. We sing songs to you, O God. Let you be the center of our worship, O God.
What? 
thank you that you are bigger than everything, Lord God. Thank you that you are bigger than our problems, Lord God. Yes, just that you can do everything, Lord God, that nothing is impossible. Yes, Lord God. That in your name, Lord God, all things are possible, Jesus. Yes, and you're the only one who can save us, Lord God. You are our ultimate Savior, Lord God. Thank you for your love, Lord God. Thank you for your unchanging love, Lord God. Yes, Jesus, hallelujah. We are here today, Lord God, to worship you, Lord God. Yes, just open our hearts and our minds, Lord God. We want to get deeper in our relationship to you, Lord God, and to leave everything behind, Lord God. Lord, we just want to surrender everything to you, Lord God, and give everything to you, Lord God. Take control in our lives, Lord God. Yes, Jesus, and we can only be Hey, 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 hey! We are ready for kids' song. I'm trying to be Amy, so. Good luck. Good luck and God bless. There you go. Try that there. Okay. I'm sure she's hiding somewhere. Get is here. Yay. Eva's here. Yay. Oh well. We're still going to have kids' song, aren't we? Without with. Right? So if the children want to come up and uh, get us here for the younger uh, little, little ones, under five, and uh, Amy's good for five and above to ten, I guess. If you know your age, you know where we're calling you right now. How many people lost power last night? Mm. Yeah, we're missing some people, so I would say they must have lost power too. But we've got the power this morning. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, kids are coming up. There we go. Hello. Johnny. Ready for Sunday school? No, not likely. There we are. Morning. Oh, here she is. <laughs> Good. Are you guys excited? Yeah. I wonder what we're going to open today. I wonder. Do you guys remember what we opened up last week? What part of the Christmas story did we open up? The angel. angel, that's right. We open the angel, so I wonder what's going to be in the box today. I can't wait and see. All right, um, just a note. What we're going to do, um, just for the safety of the kids, is that door that we're going through, we're actually going to keep it locked. So when you come in to get your kids afterwards, um, we're going into Geta's room anyway um, to get the little ones. Just pick them up there because we can open, hi, we can open up that screen and let them out. Just that main door is there and I'm just a little nervous. We're going to have some escapees and I want to make sure. <laughs> um, I'm trying to like corral them at the end, but it, as you know, it gets a little crazy. So. If we could just have, we're gonna keep that door locked and it's just for the safety of the kids. So at the end, um, they can, if you just wouldn't mind coming through the, the kitchen there to pick them up, that would be great. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. All right, and look at everybody's so festive and ready mm. for Christmas. 
so exciting. All right, stretch your hands in Jesus' name, Lord. We just thank you uh, for these children. God, I just thank pray you, that they're going to learn so much about you today, about why you came, about the miracle of Christmas. And we just thank you for it. Bless them, protect them, watch over them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's great to see the uh, kids' home growing. Just looking around, <laughs> seeing who I see. Amen. How many people, this is your first time at the Fellowship Church? How many do you, one, and anybody here, right here? There we go. We want to welcome you. Thanks for being here today with us. Thanks, Paul, for being here. Thank you. Amen. It's all good. And uh, we do have some visitors from Deer Lake which is a dear place in Newfoundland that are here today, and it's uh, uh, Richard's mom and dad. Always nice to have them here. Uh, it's great to have uh, us all here. I'm not sure what if they made these slides up or not, but we, we are planning a water baptismal service for December 3rd in the evening. We would like people to sign up for that water baptismal service we would like you to sign up even if you're planning on coming that night. Like, you don't need to be getting baptized, but if you're planning on being there, and if you'd like to take something for, for in the food uh, section, sandwiches or sweets, we would like to know that. Uh, the last time we had the water baptismal service, there, there wasn't, uh, there was a way, 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 way more food than people. And, uh, I mean, that's good, uh, but only to an extent like the buckles on the belt. It's only to an extent that that food is good. Hallelujah. And uh, so the water baptismal that's taking place, we would like everybody to sign up for that. We, that's going to be a great thing, December 3rd. Next Sunday night at Member 2 Trade and Convention Center, Rock Church is coming down with their worship team, and they're going to do uh, a worship set, uh, and they've invited our church to attend that. So... That's next Sunday night at Member 2. Uh, we'll have a further announcement uh, later on, uh, and uh, that's all good. Christmas banquet. Christmas banquet. First time in four years, so that... Now, I hope you can follow me on this one. 200, around 200... And, you know, maybe we're thinking 220, but we're thinking 200. Well, this is where that area will hold. That means everybody in the church here could come. That's what that means. But everybody you know can't come. So what we're going to do is you see on the paper there, you can put your name down. Uh, adults is $20. Students is $15. Either one is a really good deal. There's a way more. You're receiving a way more than that in that evening. Uh, if we have extra tickets left on December 12th, people that have said, I would like to invite a guest, you need to put that down out there too, that you would like a guest to come with you. Then if there is 30 tickets or 40 tickets or whatever left, we will start at the top of that list and go down that list and offer you what you've asked for. Uh, it, and there's a family price of uh, $50. So it's $20 an adult. So if you have, uh, say, two adults and 15 children, it's, it's, it's $50. It's, you know, so. so but, but see, the, the, the thing is, if you do have somebody you want to invite, the first priority is the church family here. So that, that's, we want everybody in the church family to be here. If you can't afford to come, uh, that's okay, too. We'll look after that. But it's just 
uh, we have to start somewhere, and uh, this will be the uh, this will be the event for that. And we hope everybody can uh, we hope everybody can be there. It's always our intent that everybody everybody's welcome. Amen. Amen. So where are we at next? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Drive. What? Drive. The drives. Yeah. Yeah, Bruce has been driving me crazy, so he's... I, <laughs> two thumbs up. Uh, we have... Uh, there's a sheet also up there that if you wouldn't mind driving somebody, uh, we do get a lot of requests on Sunday for transportation to the church or home from the church. And if you're coming and you have room in your car and you'd like to say, well, I'd like to sign up for that, that I would uh, be willing to pick somebody up, uh, that's also, there's a list out there for that, that uh, we would help uh, people that, are, that want to be here but don't have a way to get here. Uh, and uh, we do provide a taxi for people, which is uh, another option, uh, which is fine also. Uh, we're thinking there's a lot of people in the church probably, I didn't tell Alice yet, but I signed up that we're going to be driving. <laughs> Somebody home either before the service or after the service. <laughs> way, way, way back after I got saved, the very first vehicle I bought, or we bought, we sat in that vehicle in the parking lot and dedicated it to the Lord and said, God, this will be for your, your use, not ours. And we, we are secondary users of our vehicle. That this, first of all, kingdom come and his will be done with what we have. And so that's been our... That's been our heart and our motive uh, since day one, so uh, that's why I can freely ask everybody else, because to me, it shouldn't be a problem to drive somebody in your car. If it is, you have a problem with what you own, and that's another question, and I'll, I wouldn't address that today, because that would make you feel bad, so I'm just trying to... Uh, anyway, the, the, the subject I wanted to talk to you about today was the road to a miracle, um, who, who needs a miracle? Like anybody, like could use could use a miracle. Um, so she needs. There's one thing about a miracle that it ha has to happen before it happens. You have to confess it before it happens. You, you, you don't get a miracle for silence. Hallelujah. You don't get a miracle for being silent. Whatsoever you ask when you pray. That has to do with asking. That has to do with talking. Uh, uh, somebody said, well, what about an unspoken request? I said, that's an unanswered miracle. Because we have to dec decree and declare what we believe. What I believe, I continue to decree and declare over my life, and it keeps working. It keeps working. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So if I'm going around and talking down about everything and talking poor me, and poor this, and poor that, and I'm so discouraged, and I'm so this, then that's the life I will live, because whatever I confess, I live. But if I say I'm more than a conqueror through Christ that's called me into the kingdom of God, I'm a child of the Most High God, He is my blesser and my redeemer, He is looking after me even now as I stand here, He is my God, He is well able and well equipped to help me in my time of trouble. If I decree that and I go into a time of trouble, my God shows up because I've already asked Him to be there before I got there. Amen. Hallelujah. God has, God has set the whole world up in order. The, the whole, everything is in order. Uh, I used to think I was, a, I was a product of my circumstances. Anybody? You think, I'm just a product of my trouble. I didn't grow up in a good place, so I was a product of that. So people say, well, he's not a good person to hang around. They were telling you the truth. Because I grew up in a place that wasn't a good place to hang around people. You had to be cautious. You had to be careful. You had to always be looking out for yourself. You had to be street smart. You had to be all those things in the world that I grew up in. So I was a product until I got saved and realized I'm a product of what I believe. I'm a product of what I believe, not what happened to me. I can look at what happened to me and say, poor me. Or I can look at what happened to me and believe God. That, that I wouldn't even be who I am if it wasn't for that. So God has, has, has used all that together for good. Or I would go around and say, well, you know, if it wasn't for, you know, 1974, 
I got married and... <laughs> oh yeah, some people blame their wife. Adam started the whole mess with that, didn't he? Yeah, and the woman thou has given me, Lord. But to everything in the world, when God set up the world, He set it up so wonderfully that everything functions according to laws and principles. Everything. Everything operates. Uh, I, I thought, you know, you see a, a tree growing in the woods, and a man can take that tree, and he can cut it into wood, uh, you know, plane it down, and make a beautiful kitchen cupboard for you. And, and he took a tree and did that because he believed and he knew in his mind, okay, there's a system here at work. If I put that wood through this mill and I put that wood through the planer and if I cut the wood here and here and here and put it together like this, I'll have something. See, faith without works is a tree. Come on, somebody. We, we say that we want what God has for us, but we don't want to do anything, yet it's a principle that God has put in place that every good thing that cometh down from the Father above, no good thing will He withhold for those that believe that He's good, and He wants to give you, and He is a rewarder of those that seek Him, so He is looking to help you today. He's our ever-present help in times of trouble, but do you believe that? See, the greatest thing you can do is what you believe. That's why the enemy is always after your belief system. Some people think, no, he's after my Toyota payment. He doesn't care about your Toyota payment. He really doesn't. He cares that you believe whether God can help you pay it or not. That's what he cares about. The devil says, if he can rob what you believe, he's robbed your faith. If he robs your faith, he's robbed your works. You become dormant in the kingdom. You can sit in a church dormant of the power of God because you stopped believing. Amen. Not because you stopped attending. Hallelujah. Yeah, amen, Hallelujah. I'm getting all wound up up here. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel an anointing in the room right now. I feel the, see, I decree and I declare that because that's how I feel. And I, I can't deny that God's presence is here. And if God's presence is here, anything can happen and it probably will. And so it's a matter of us decreeing and declaring what we believe. And the truth is you are a product of what you believe. People here come from all over the world. There's people here from, and even from Glace Bay, right? There's all over the world, and even, even Glace Bay. No water for a few people from there. That, but you came here today because of what you believe. And, and you could have, uh, I'll, the people here from China, uh, this week we ordered two dozen Chinese Bibles to help out the, the Chinese community that, uh, because we believe. We believe. You say that, you know, how many people in the church may need a Bible? Well, there's going to be at least 24 <laughs> until we order more because you order, your steps are ordered according to what you believe. And so if you, if you stop believing, you stop growing, you stop understanding, you stop what you're doing. But a, a sign of who you are and a sign of what you have. So you can have people in China and they say, you know, I believe I'm going to move to uh, Canada. I'm going to go to the CBU. And I'm going to improve my life. Yep. They really believe that. Another student stands there and says, no, I don't believe that. I'm going to stay in China. What's the difference? What they believe. And what you believe takes you to a new location or it leaves you where you're at. And you can remain in your past, in your sorrow, in your trouble of your childhood. You can have that at one event that happened. Oh, that event, that teacher, oh, my uncle, my whoever. You can take that one event and you can get stuck there because that's what you believe. Your problem all reverts back to every problem you've had. Well, my father screamed at me when I was a kid and now that's my problem. You're 45 years old. But see, what you're stuck on is what you believe, not on what happened to you. Because there's far worse things happen to somebody else, and they're with their hands raised, praising God. There's people here had far worse things happen to you than some little wee thing that happened to you. You've been had major trauma in your life, and yet you stand and rejoice with your hands worship to God because you believe what you believe, and it changes everything. So I'm glad for what I believe, because when I first got saved, I thought, well, and before that, it was I'm just a... Child of my circumstances. How come you're bad? <laughs> because that's all I know how to be. 
until you learn good, until you hear good, until you can change what you believe. That was so powerful to me because I don't know how other people grew up, but I thought, man, oh man, nobody's got an advantage over me anymore. Yeah. It's not based on your finances. Amen. It's not based on your pedigree. Amen. It's not based on the color of your skin. God's basing everything on what you believe. Yeah. And I choose to believe. Yeah. I choose to believe the Word. I choose to believe it's true. I choose to believe that God is powerful. I choose to believe that God exists. In a world that denies Him, I choose to believe. And so there's things that I just believe that are true, and I walk in that truth. So if I want a miracle, you know, I kind of asked you who wants a miracle, and four people put their hand up. I mean, that was amazing, right? But the four people can have their miracle, or 40 people can have their miracle, or 4,000 people can have their miracle according to what you believe. Because if you, if you believe something and, and you believe it enough, he, it's uh, Hebrews chapter 11 is the, the faith chapter, uh, and everything is set up, everything in the whole planet is set up that it would reproduce after its own kind, every living thing. So the spiritual kingdom... God has set up faith to reproduce. Faith is the reproducing agent in our life with what I believe that I'll believe by faith. If I don't confess it, I don't believe it. Come on, somebody. If you believe that... You need to tell yourself sometimes, look in the mirror and just say, there's a great success story there, right there, look there's a great guy right there. He's an awesome husband. Right, Alice? He's an awesome husband. Right? Well, sometimes besides the mirror, you want to check with somebody, you know, like, but, 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 but see, the, the, the truth is, it matters what I believe about me when I look in the mirror. Because you look in the mirror and you say, well, you know, my uh, you know, hair's like this, or my nose is like this, or my chin's double, or whatever you want to look at. Or you can look and say, there's a child of the king, hallelujah. There's a man that's going to worship God. There's somebody that's going to praise God. Because I believe it. I decree and I declare it. And then when you decree and declare it, God's faithful to do it. You have not. And if you don't ask, you can't have. But when you ask, you shall receive good measure, pressed down, far beyond, exceedingly above that which you can ask or think. I enjoy living an abundant life, but, but I can also decree another life if I want to. And in the face of circumstances, what's really challenged is our faith to con keep confessing what we believe because we didn't see it happen in the season we're in, so maybe it's not going to happen. I compared, we, we, we drove the other day, we drove up to um, Airshad. Anyway, the school up there and kids were playing volleyball. So I said, well, put it in the, the map thing on the phone, and we'll, we'll go there. So it just shows you this blue line, and then it doesn't say anything. <laughs> it just shows you the blue line. Just... And then when we were about, I don't know, maybe a kilometer away from the turn, it said, one kilometer, turn right. <coughs> and I'm thinking, why didn't it tell me before that? Because there's a system at work in a GPS. Whoever designed it, designed it to only let you know. I could be on the right road for four hours and not hear a word out of that machine until I get a kilometer away from where I'm supposed to turn. You see, sometimes God is with you and He's not saying much because you're on the right road. You're heading in the right direction. But when you get to a place that needs a turn, He's going to say, okay, you need to turn here. Because God is a system that the people that invented the GPS put a system in place. I can complain about it. I can say, you know, the, the system may say, uh, your destination will be in four hours. I'll say, well, I don't like that. I want to get there in 15 minutes. <laughs> the GPS will say, you should have took a plane. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me today? <laughs> are, you, are you catching this? I, 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 I know that when I speak about things. There can be things that are natural, normal, uh, you know, that all run on a system. But God runs on a system. His, his faith-based people, 
And when you catch the system of faith, when you catch how it works, you can work the work of faith and you'll see the works of faith manifest in your life. But if you fail to see it, it's not that God can't do it. He can't do what you can't confess. Hallelujah. That was worth the admission and we didn't even take up an offering. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. See, I believe, this is what I believe about 2024, because I was praying about 2024 and saying, and God starts to drop in my spirit what 2024 is going to be like. And God's saying, it's going to be a great manifestation of my Holy Spirit. My Holy Spirit in 2024 is going to touch so many lives that families are going to be reunited and children are going to get saved. 2024 is going to be a powerful year for the church. The church is about to advance and, and to exceed itself beyond its imagination, beyond its borders. So I'm decreeing and declaring that in 2023 because I believe, do you believe that your family in 2024 is going to be united like never before? And in 2020, see, you, can, you don't believe it, you won't say it. You say, well, Pastor, you don't know the family I'm dealing with. It doesn't matter about the family you're dealing with. It matters about the God that you serve, that you believe that God is well able to do that which you're asking. So when you believe in a big God, you'll make big requests. And you say, well, it hasn't happened in... Uh, three hours and 30 minutes. Well, it's a four-hour drive. <laughs> get ready, get ready, get ready. Because very shortly you're going to hear in about one kilometer. How many want to be one kilometer away from your next miracle and say, I'm not quitting? You see, the devil wants you to quit. He wants you to give up. He wants you to stop doing what's right. And God says, just keep going on. Just endure a little bit more. Just keep enduring a little bit more because the turn signal in your car is about to turn on because you're going to turn from wrong into right. You're going to turn into curse into blessing because he's going to make a big turnaround in your life. And the truth is the church needs a turnaround. You see... We might think of what, what's happened in the last few years as a great uh, problem. And God said, no, it's a great pruning. Why would he prune? That the church might grow more. That it might come 30-fold and 60-fold and 100-fold. Sometimes we prayed for revival without problems. But the GPS is saying, hold on, buckle up. Sometimes I'll say here when I read the scripture, buckle up, sit down, buckle up. Why? Because we're supposed to go somewhere. Yeah. See, God doesn't want to just take us to this room, but he wants to take us into heavenly places in this room that we might understand the kingdom of God in a greater way that when we leave this room, we'll be changed leaving this room from when we came in this room because Jesus is powerful enough to change your world. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I came expecting a miracle today. That's why I said, do you, how many people need a miracle? Well, do you, will you confess that? I need a miracle. I need a miracle in my home. I need my son to be saved. I need my daughter to be saved. I need my spouse to be saved. You've got to confess and believe and say, well, it hasn't happened in three point some hours. Don't give up when you're on the brink of a miracle. I've, there was, a, there was a, somebody in a hospital room, and they were really getting discouraged and discouraged and discouraged and more discouraged. Nobody was visiting them, discouraged and discouraged. I don't know if you've ever been someplace that you felt nobody even cares. Nobody cares of what you're going through. Nobody cares what's happened in your house. Nobody cares about your family. Nobody cares about the argument that you had. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. So anyway, God says, speaks to my heart and says, uh, you need to go visit that person. So I go up get the elevator, knock on the door, open the door. And they're almost in tears now. They're so discouraged. And I said, what are you so discouraged about? This is a pastor, right? This is a minister that's in the... said, I thought nobody cared. I said, don't let the devil lie to you. I said, God directed me my steps here today just to come and see you personally. I said, this is your day. God does care about you. God cares about all of us. But if the enemy can rob us and steal from us and destroy our faith, he has made us inactive to pray for the next thing we need. Because without faith, it's impossible. So it's a matter of us today believing 
and keep believing and keep knocking and keep believing and keep knocking. This church is going to be triumphant. We are going to be a triumphant people. My family is going to serve the Lord. I'm going to be triumphant about it. I'm going to, having done all, take a stand about it. I'm going to see success in the generation I'm living in. I'm not about to drop the torch. I'm about to light it again and carry on a mantle that we're going to go on into the next generation. Hallelujah. I know you think I might have forgot a scripture, but I didn't. Here it is. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 1 to 6. Might as well stand for it. We have... Hallelujah. Now faith is... Now faith is something. Hallelujah. Don't lose your confidence, for with it comes a great reward. But now faith is confident in what we hope for. And assurance about what we do not see. I don't see my destination yet, but I'm assured we're getting there. This is what the ancients were commended by, for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what we is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offering. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. Listen, your acts of faith still speak after you're gone. You might wonder today where your children are going to be. They're going to be right where you're speaking about them now. You might be gone, but your word does not pass away. By faith, uh, by faith Enoch was taken from this life and, uh, so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commanded as one who pleased God. Can't please God without faith. He is a man of faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. There's few things in God that are impossible. This is one of them. Because anyone who comes to him must how do you get saved? The greatest gift of salvation. Believe in your heart. Yes. Confess with your mouth what you believe, and you shall be saved. It says, and, and uh, you must believe that he exists. Does God exist in your world anymore? And that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Lord, I decree while we're standing a prayer that, Lord, this church is... Uh, uh, this people, this Sunday, at this time, are being elevated to a new level. That, Lord, that we rise up, and only those that believe it can say amen or praise the Lord, whatever. If you don't believe it, uh, it's okay. I don't expect you to confess what you don't believe, but I do ask you to confess what you do believe. Because what you do believe, God says, if you believe he exists and are willing to confess it, no good thing will he withhold from you. So, Lord, I pray today that this church, this people, we would believe no matter what culture we come from, no matter what country in the world, we come now to your kingdom come and your will be done in this place, God, that we are now in, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, grab a seat and buckle up. Hallelujah. Faith is actually a vehicle, I believe, into the unseen realm. That when I operate in my faith, uh, faith is the currency of heaven. Uh, heaven has a storehouse full of uh, many things, and I can knock on the door. But if I have no faith, I get nothing from God. But if I have faith to believe, even as a grain of mustard seed, I believe God. I believe God for my salvation. When I believe God for my salvation, guess what I got? He didn't give me a snake, didn't give me a stone. He gave me what I requested. The one, <laughs> the one problem we have, I find, and, and it, sometimes in listening to conversation, I feel that we're talking faith for negative things to happen. We're not talking faith for positive things. We're talking faith like, oh yeah, things are going to get worse. Yep. 
Oh, no, COVID didn't go anywhere. They're still around. They didn't got masked on. We're talking negative things. Oh, the price of fuel? Oh, that's going to be over $2 a gallon by January. Uh, uh, f- food prices? Oh, no, don't worry. They're all going up. Like, for some reason, every problem that you magnify diminishes your image of God. The Bible says, oh, come and magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name that's above every other name because I believe that no matter if gas was $45 an ounce, my God is able to supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. It's not a matter of what the circumstances are. It's a matter of what I believe. If you want to discourage yourself, go ahead. But the Bible says that we should be encouraging one another unto good works. So you should be talking. You are talking what you believe. You should be talking about a God that you believe in that's able to help you. Hallelujah. Because faith is the currency of heaven. And for me, it was a great... It was a great revelation I got when I got saved. It was like, for everybody here that wants to cook something or make something, it's a great blessing when you get a cookbook, especially for some of you (laughs) who only think you can cook. A great revelation to me is I believed in God, but thank God for the Bible because that was the cookbook of heaven. That, that, that contained for me the ingredients on how faith works. That included me, okay, so, so this is how it works? I'm entitled to have what, what I believe God can do? I'm entitled to that? But I'm not perfect enough. Oh, that wasn't in there. Only the perfect can pray. Oh, you might sit there, <clears throat> for, for 16 years I was in the church and I called myself a, a pew person. I was a pew person. I was one of you people <laughs> today. I came to church every Sunday and the pastor would get up to speak and I would sit in a pew, not beside Roly necessarily, but <clears throat> I would sit there and I would listen and hear, hear the man of God speak or the woman of God speak and, and I grew in my faith and my understanding of God trying to learn Well, how does this work? Why can some people work it and some people can't? Why does it seem to work for this person and not work over there? I I don't know. I'm I'm the only one I know. But but see, God had, had me on a mission, and my mission was to discover God. And the more that I looked for Him, the more I found out about me. Because wrapped up... In him, I need it to be, but I need it to get unwrapped from me. You'll catch that later on. You'll, you can ask your name. What do you mean by that one? What do you, what do you, huh? But you see, until you can decrease yourself, you can't increase in him. So I had to allow everything that I believe to become, okay, this is the, what I think I believe. What does the Bible say I should believe? Because we can talk to all kinds of people, and yet everything in God that he releases to us, faith is, I believe it, I confess it, I agree with it, I'll have it. Now, the time of having it is up to God. I don't, I don't stop believing. Uh, I've told before about my family members. I believe when I get saved, my family members, the Bible says, you and your household, so I just started to say, well, my household's going to get saved. Yep, everybody in my family. Everybody, yep. Then one by one, I remember younger brother, two, two brothers down. He was standing with me in church. And the, I was the pew person. And uh, they, they said, uh, anybody here want to accept Christ? And I'm like, well, I should, I should give him that. You know, I, should, I should help you out, God. You ever want to help God out a little bit? And so I, I said, I was going to say something to him, and God said, you just go and pray. 
So I went the, at the church. They had uh, chairs up at the front. So I went down and I knelt by a chair. And I just started to pray. I said, thanks, God. And next to me was my brother came and he asked Jesus into his heart. Then another brother. Then a sister. Another brother. I remember uh, my youngest brother, I talked to him for two hours. And then I asked him, is there anything that he has a question about? And he said, yeah, is there life in other planets? <laughs> I said, I don't know. I answered all the questions I had. I just didn't answer the one question he had. I said, I don't know. Could be. Doesn't say. Doesn't say one way or the other. So I, I don't make up stuff. It's in the Bible. It is. If not there, I just said, well, I don't know. It's not there. The answer's not there. I don't need four or five theologians to confuse me. I just, not there. He said, okay. Yeah. I said, well, do you want to get saved? He said, oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. So I talked to him for two hours for nothing. <laughs> and sometimes we are going around in circles when we should be listening to the GPS. Because you've passed your destination four or five times now. And God wants you to tune in and have what he has for you. And the, 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 the thing with God is, is that, uh, you know, my mom gets saved, my dad, everybody... But I believed before they ever did. I confessed that they were going to before they ever did. And when my mom was slamming the door in my face, I would holler and <laughs> say, Mom, I love you. And I'd leave. Week after week, because I went up every week, believing, confessing, no, no, my mom's going to get saved. My mom is going to get saved. She's holding out, but she's going to get saved. <laughs> you got anybody in your world holding out? Yeah. Come on, somebody. And, but but if, you, if you let down, see, the, the, what Jesus said to Peter was, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you, that your faith would not be able to stand. So it had to do with his faith that Peter would be sifted from. You see, the enemy can't stop God from saving your family unless you stop praying and believing. So the enemy has to stop you to stop God. He can't stop God. But if he can convince you to let your faith go dormant, say, oh, well, you know, they're too far gone. You weren't too far gone, and you were really gone. <laughs> somebody believed for you before you ever got here, and you need to believe for somebody before they get here. And it's a matter of that we say in the spirit realm of God, God, I believe for my family. I believe that my family will be saved, and I don't know when. And I don't know how. And I don't know how you're going to do it. Some of them are really messed up. But God, I keep believing in the promises of God because they are yes and amen if I will but believe. And it's time for the church to shake itself again. Paul said to Timothy, stir yourself again, Timothy, for I know the prophecies of God spoken over you. This church has prophecies spoken over this house. And I believe that those prophecies are yet to come in many ways. We are going to have many things that we don't have sitting here today because God is faithful. And we continue to confess it. We continue to believe it. And one day we'll walk in it. And all the naysayers, they'll just be naysaying about something else. But that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter to me. And, the, the, you know, then my uncle got saved. And I remember my uncle called me at two minutes to ten. I thought, boy, this is a late phone call from him. I said, hello. He said, this is a guy. I said, oh, hello, guy. And uh, he said, I just wanted to call you. He said, I was just watching Billy Graham. He said, I just asked Jesus into my heart. 74 years old. He said, I just asked Jesus into my heart. He said, because somebody was believing somebody was getting saved. What are you believing for today? What are you believing for 2024 to be? It's time for the church, it's time for us believers to believe again, to stir yourself and say all things are possible. I'm not going to listen to a lie from the devil and say it's not possible. Wherever there's a problem on the planet, our God is bigger than that problem. We can hear the news and hear about problems, 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 but I want to hear from heaven. Amen. A prophet said to me, this is years ago, he said, Kevin, he said, the voice of men is going to go dull in your ear, and the voice of God will become loud. 
he confessed that. I believed it. Now people come into the server and they'll say, Pastor, how did you happen to talk about that this Sunday? It's like you read my mail. No, but God's reading your mail. He informs us to transform us. The very fact that you're here today is because God wants to change your world. Don't settle for being robbed and then complain about being robbed. Bible says that he is the restorer. So if you have been robbed and you have been hurt, and you have something in your childhood, you have something, I have lots of stuff in my childhood. I say, well, you know, I'm robbed. I'm, I'll never be any good. I'll never. But I don't allow that to be this, the, the, the factor in my life. God is the fa- God is the added equation to my equation that causes me to win. Add God to your situation. Whether, no matter where you're from in the world. We have people here from all around the world. And Glace Bay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you say over yourself, 2024 will be a great year. Yes. Amen. Amen. And can you tell your neighbor, 2024 is going to be a great year. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, and the Bible says, and the Bible says, if two of you shall agree as touching anything, the Father today begins the work in making next year wonderful for you. Because you decreed it, you declared it, and you believe God exists. So Father, today we bow in your presence. If there's anyone here that hasn't accepted Jesus as their Savior, you have to believe that he exists. You do. You have to believe there is a God in heaven that exists. You have to then ask him to forgive you because we've all sinned. And the, the, the act of forgiveness is because of what Jesus did on the cross when he died for you. His blood will never lose its power. His blood is available today for you to believe in. And by your act of believing that he exists, that God is real, and asking him to forgive you, you can be saved. You. Does not, you can say, well, what about this circumstance? No. The circumstances of life have been trumped by the circumstances of the cross. So, Father, today, if you're here today and you, you, you need to ask Jesus to forgive you, maybe for the very first time, you put your hand up, I'd like to pray for you today. Yes, yes, yes. And maybe you need God to forgive you for the thousandth time. You put your hand up and say, God. And, 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 and maybe you would do this today. God, I used to believe far stronger than I did before. I, I did. I, when I was first saved, I believed for everything. I believed for artificial flowers to grow, Lord. I believed for everything. But now you've, you've allowed the enemy to rob you in some ways, and you're no longer believing for your family. You're no longer believing for things. And you'd raise your hand today and say, I'm going to stir myself again to believe. I, I want to believe like never before. I want to believe like this is a new day. I'm born again, born again. I'm, this is a, a, a new... Lord, uh, I thank you for all the hands. And the hands I see by via the Spirit. Because in the Holy Spirit, there's other hands that are raised. There's a multitude of witnesses around this room that are also in, in the company of heaven that raise their hands with, with us today. They're cheering us on to the mark of the high calling. Lord, I thank you for all the hands. I thank you for all the people. I thank you for all the hearts that the people represent. And God, I decree and I declare healing over the house. I declare restoration. Anybody with an unsound mind, I, I decree soundness to their situation. Uh, Lord, that they, they no longer walk confused. Confusion is not of God. And so, Lord, I speak against that. And I declare in Jesus' name that, God, you are stronger than any act that comes against us. That, God, that you, your name is above every other name. And at your name, every problem we have has to bow. 
And so, Lord, we lift you up in this place today from coast to coast, from around the world. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here today. God bless you.